Hello world, welcome. This is the news bulletin on Kashimawa TV. I'm your host Christy. Thanks for joining us. On the news, reps worry over suspension of Beta Edu urge federal government to hasten investigation. Members of the House of Representatives on Wednesday expressed concern over the suspension of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Beta Edu. In a motion moved on the floor of the House, Honorable Billy Osrua representing the All Progressives Congress APC in Edo State, argued that implementation of the social investment programs had been halted following suspension of the minister. According to him, halting the program at a time of increasing hunger and inflation is not good for the country. The House further described the recommendation that the program be managed by the Minister of Finance as an anomaly urging the federal government to expedite investigation of the suspended minister. In the meantime, the House also pushed that the president directs the Minister of State to Edu to implement the social investment program in the interim and place on hold the idea of constituting a steering committee under the supervision of the Minister of Finance, as it contravenes the act establishing the social investment program. President Bola Tanubu had in January suspended Edu following widespread anger over an alleged 585 million Naira scandal. In other news, 51 Southern Senators elect Abiru as forum chairman, barely 24 hours after a dramatic plenary culminating into the suspension of the chairman of the Northern Senators Forum, Senator Abdul Ningi, Southern Senators have revived their forum, electing Senator Abiru representing Lagos East, as chairman, the inauguration of Abiru who replaces the Senate leader, Senator Apiemi Bamideli as well as the vice chairman, Senator Victor Ume representing Anambra, comes nine months after commencement of the 10th Senate. The 51 senators from 17 Senate He is a member of the PDP. The Federal Capital Territory Minister has been absent from major meetings of the party and has not been seen campaigning for them in the recent off-cycle elections. He does not regret his action. The one I supported before. What happened? I have decided to take a break. As you see me now, everybody should carry their cross. We came maintained. I was in PDP and I did not hide it. I told them I was not going to support their presidential candidate. Is it that I spoke or acted in a way people did not understand? He maintains he is an advocate of the rule of law, saying his non-support of the party in the 2023 presidential election was the right step and thus moves for his suspension are uncalled for. Discipline me for what? That I did what? I am an advocate of the party's constitution. Assuming we lost the governorship, 
Will they be talking about Rivers as a PDP state? Bielsa State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has fixed April 22 for parties to adopt their final briefs of argument in the petition of the All Progressives Congress APC and its candidate, Timothy Silva, challenging the outcome of the exercise. The three-member panel led okayed the matter for adoption of addresses, after Governor Duye Diri, his deputy, and the People's Democratic Party PDP, who are respondents in the matter, closed their defense. At Thursday's sitting, Diri and his deputy were ready to open and close their defense. The governor was present to witness the day's proceedings as his witness tendered the official result of the election as well as the final declaration of the result. Under cross-examination by counsel for the petitioners, the witness told the tribunal that the Independent National Electoral Commission discharged its function credibly by conducting the election in compliance with provisions of the 1999 Constitution, as amended. An Electoral Act 2022, the deputy governor also produced a witness, who confirmed that the deputy governor is a legal practitioner whose call to bar certificate was listed in the electoral umpire's form. The PDP witness informed the tribunal that he was not physically present in the polling units of the local government areas on the election day but was there virtually. He added that those whose names were not ticked on the register did not vote on the election day. Despite objection by the petitioners, a certified copy of the voter's register containing the name of the witness was admitted in evidence by the tribunal. Meanwhile, the tribunal has fixed April 22 for adoption of written addresses. Spokesman for the Senate, Senator Yemi Adaramodu, has berated the People's Democratic Party PDP for calling for the resignation of Senate President Godswill Akparbio over what he described as unfounded claim of 3.70 RNRA budget padding allegations by the suspended senator representing Bauchi Central, Abdul Ningi. Adaramodu in a statement on Thursday, declared that the PDP has fatally failed in their sordid attempt to hoodwink the unsuspecting public on the ineffectual but spurious allegations of budget padding. The party's ludicrous call for the resignation of Senator Godswell Akparbio as the Senate president is unthinkable and shows the party as a massaging bomb for falsehood and immoral legislative outbursts. He stated that Akparbio will not resign and has no intention to resign at any time because he has not committed any wrongdoing to warrant a resignation. According to him, it is shocking that the PDP leadership could not comprehend what transpired at Tuesday's plenary where the allegations were debated and Ningi suspended. He said, contrary to the contention by the PDP that 3.7 trillion Naira was discreetly inserted into the 2020 for budget for alleged non-existent projects and what transpired on the floor of the chamber, it is open knowledge that no such absurdity is found in the budget passed by the National Assembly and signed by President Bola Ahmed Tanubu which is being implemented judiciously by the federal government. Perhaps the 3.70 RN Nara being mentioned in the PDP's shocking statement exists only in the fickle minds of its purveyors and serves as a dubious version of the budget generated by PDP's unidentified political flying objects. He further stated, contrary to the unspeakable grandstanding, Senator Ningi was never intimidated nor harassed, Neither was he gagged nor denied the privilege to exercise his right of reply as the senator was given ample opportunity to defend himself. But the whole world saw how he floundered, since he had no verifiable facts to substantiate his allegations and his futile efforts to defend lies. So, the decision to debate the matter in the Committee of the Whole was in sync with the resolve of the leadership of the 10th Senate under Senator Akparbio to stand for transparency, justice and fairness. The proceedings of the plenary were transmitted live by at least five popular national television stations, making all right-thinking people to wonder the basis on which the PDP is questioning the process. The PDP expected the Senate to sweep the unfounded allegations under the carpet, but the 10th Senate under the leadership of Senate President Akparbio has zero tolerance for corruption. Insipid lies and egregious falsehoods such as the 3.7 trillion Naira budget padding allegations and could not have conducted the investigation in the closet as suggested by the PDP. Making the Senate President, Senator Godswill Akparbio the fruit to receive the stones is curious, the Senate and the House of Representatives made the appropriations law, 
Hence the suspended senator disparaged and impugned on the social, political and legislative integrity of all. No amount of lies and fake allegations will distract the 10th Senate, under Senator Godswill Ock Parbio, from delivering good legislation. back the kidnapped school children. He said the country needs to act decisively by deploying ground troops. Now that will be all for our viewers and listeners on the news bulletin. Get social with us, subscribe to this channel Kashimawo TV. I'm Christy. Thanks for sticking around.